What's going on guys? Today we are going to be pulling the cylinder head off of this S52 here. Now if you're just coming into the video you'll notice that there's quite a few things missing from the car. If you go and check out my channel on the playlist section I have a complete head gasket removal series of videos basically getting to the point of how we got here. So I have videos about how to remove the cooling system, the exhaust manifold, the valve cover, the vanos, and the intake system. So basically we're just going to start off with all of those things off. So we're basically just going to get down into what it actually takes to just remove this cylinder head apart from those those other things being removed. Tools you will need. Flathead screwdriver, 5 millimeter allen key, 3 8 driver, 3 8 extension, 10 millimeter socket, half inch driver, half inch extension, half inch to 3 8 adapter, E12 torque socket. Now the cylinder head bolts are E12, at least the OEM ones are. Um, so they're star pointed bolts. Don't get a generic 12 point, get an actual E star bit. These head bolts are star point for a reason. These star point bolts get way more grip than a standard hex socket would. Go get an actual set of Torx bits. And we're also going to need a breaker bar. This is just the handle of uh, my jack and it sits nicely like that. So if you, if you have an actual breaker bar for half inch, that'll work too. I use it to help with uh, cracking the head bolts. It makes it a lot easier. So let's get started. Okay, so there are still a few things attached to the cylinder head at this point that we're gonna need to remove before we can actually start removing just the cylinder head. Uh, those being the coolant temperature sensor, two cooling hoses, a little block plate for the wiring harness, and then the cam position sensor. So we're gonna get all those off and then we'll start undoing the main head bolts. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna remove is the cam position sensor. So that little bolt is a five millimeter Allen key. So we're gonna take him off. And when I take him off, I'm just gonna set him in the bay. Now would be a really good time to replace the cam position sensor and the crank position sensor if you're going to do that. And that's line got on the way. There we go. And I always like to screw the cam position sensor bolt back into the cylinder head so you don't lose it. There we go. The next thing we're gonna be removing is the coolant temperature sensor and that guy basically just unplugs. Um, I'm gonna take some duct tape and a sharpie and mark down that this is the coolant temperature sensor because um, the underside of the E36 manifold looks like a spaghetti factory. It's really easy to lose a lot of wires and plugins to sensors so I'm just gonna mark them. There we go. So he's marked. Alright so the next thing on here is going to be this cooling hose right here. These come from the throttle cooling lines I believe actually. But I do have a throttle body coolant delete. So it just gets rerouted back into the uh, bypass hose. That guy can hang out. Okay, so the next thing on the list is going to be this little wiring harness plate, I guess you could call it. It basically holds some of the wires in. in. So it's attached to the head, and that guy's just an easy 10 millimeter bolt. It just comes right off. There we go, you can sort of bend them out of the way and put the bolt back in place so you don't lose it. And last but not least, we got this rear heater core hose right here. That's attached to the back of the cylinder head. And he also just unscrews the clamp. And he should pop off. Good to go. And the last thing we're gonna make sure that we remove before we start undoing all these bolts is that all the spark plugs are out. So if you haven't taken out the spark plugs yet, now is a good time. This is a 16 millimeter spark plug socket. A good way to get them out is to use uh, one of your coils, you can just stick them down in there and most of the time the coil pack will pick out the plug. Okay now from here is where the fun begins. So before we start on bolting all 14 of the cylinder head bolts, there are two bolts on the front section of the cylinder head. They are both 8mm Torx bolts 
and I like to use a 3 8 driver with a small extension and then a quarter inch adapter to the E8 because I don't have an E8 in 3 8 drive, I wish I did. But there's one right here at the top of the head, or oh, right next to the camshaft position sensor. One right there. And then the last one is going to be in this little pocket, this little hole right here, by the main timing chain. I do see a lot of people forget about this bolt and they can't get their head off because it's still in place. It's usually, it's in a little hole down here, if you can see that. And a lot of times, a lot of times oil is in that hole and so you can't really see the head of the bolt. You just know, just gotta know it's there basically. And he is also an E8 bolt. And if you wanna dig them out, you can use a set of needle nose pliers. Just be sure not to drop them into the crankcase. Okay, so now we're gonna start pulling the cylinder head bolts off. And I like to pull them off in the order that you put the head on. So it's sort of, sort of in a diagonal pattern all the way across the head. But basically, if your cams are set to top dead center, you should be able to get your wrench down into the cylinder head bolt wells pretty easily. Okay, so now we're gonna start removing the cylinder head bolts. Now, these guys are E12, and I'm using an E12 Torx socket, and they are Torx sockets. I cannot stress this enough. Use an actual star-pointed Torx bit. Do not use some generic 12-point bit that says it will work on Torx. These head bolts are insanely tight. And if you use the wrong style of socket to pull it off and you end up stripping the bolt, you are grade A fucked. Like there is, I don't know, I, you, I can't even explain how screwed I would be if I stripped one of the head bolts pulling it off. So I use an E12 Torx, you have to. I use it from a 3 8 to a half inch adapter with a half inch extension onto a half inch ratchet and these things are on insanely tight so for the initial break I like to take the handle of my jack and slide it over the end sort of like a breaker bar like a cheater bar and it cracks them all loose pretty well they are still they will still put up a fight even with this setup because they are on that tight And I like to crack them in the order that they get installed in. Which is sort of the crisscross pattern starting from the middle out. I'll include a diagram in the bio of this video that shows the order in which they are installed in. So that last one didn't come off very easily so I just switched the setup to a 3 8 extension onto the driver from the half inch. So keep that in mind that some of them will be easier to take off than others. And because you're removing the head it doesn't necessarily have to be in the exact order that it was put on. Just in a similar one, so you sort of break, break the bolts evenly. I know some people who just outright take them off one by one down the line. I prefer not to do that. <clears throat> some bolts are gonna be easier to get to with the wrench than others. I can imagine if you're doing this without the breaker bar, it would really suck. There we go, so now all of them are loose. Now I'm gonna go back, make sure all of them are actually loose. Ok, 
Okay, there we go. So now all of them are cracked. Okay, now that they're all loose, we're just gonna rip them out. Now keep in mind, you're probably not gonna be able to get them out, but once you get them loose, you'll notice that when you start to spin them, you hear that click? What that means is, is that little click, is that the threads are backed off enough to the point where it's jumping on the last thread and jumping back up and down. So if you can back it out to the point where when you just spin it, it just clicks, it means that it's, it's basically off. So if you wanna go after the head bolts and get them all out, you can do that. Okay, so now we got everything loose. All the cylinder head bolts are not out, but they are very loose. They're not even in the block threads anymore. Um, so basically at this point, I bet we could even just, oh yep, look at that. So the head is ready to come off. Um, I'm not gonna do this alone. I definitely would advise against pulling the head alone. It is a two man job easily. So. Basically, I'm just gonna go through the plan of attack at this point. So when you're pulling the head off, first of all, it is very heavy. I think it weighs at maybe between 50 and 100 pounds. I don't know, I'll get a weight on it later, but it's a heavy piece of metal and it's very long and wide and bulky. So it's very awkward to carry, especially getting it out of the bay. So I'm gonna be up front pulling it out and have another person from behind helping me pull it out but there's a couple things you wanna know. The first one is, is the lower timing chain guard right here. You need to clear that. So basically you have to pull the head up and this way, like back out towards the passenger side off. So you need to pull it back out off to clear the chain and then up. But you also sort of gotta get it up in this way to clear the wiring harness here. So it's sort of juggling like the front end up over the chain and then back this way and then up. So it makes it a lot easier to have more than one person. So I'm gonna go get a friend and then we're gonna pull this out. Now the second portion to this plan of attack is planning on where you're gonna put the head when it's off. So basically I would clear designated space before you pull it, just so you're not standing there with a 50 pound head going, where do I put this? You know, so you sort of want to plan out what's going to go on and discuss it with the person who's helping you pull it or your team member or whoever you're going to get to help you do this. You basically want them to know the full plan before you start going on with it, you know, just to prevent injury on someone's part from lifting a heavy head or dropping it or, you know, where is it going to go? Maybe you set it on something it's not supposed to be set on. You never know. So basically have a plan, have a designated spot for the head and have some help. You ready? Um, sure. Oh god, this is heavy, bro. This shit is fucking heavy. Shit. Oh! There we go. Pull the mask off. There we go. You got it? Yes, sir. So that's it, it's out. There's only one thing to note. Um, in the head bolts, there are little washers sit between the head of the bolt and the head itself. So if you start popping out these head bolts, those washers are gonna fall down into the head. So I would advise trying to remove them with the head sitting flat as opposed to standing up or upside down like this because those washers might come loose and then they could get stuck like inside your valve springs or something or somewhere and you might not be able to find it until you put the head back on and start the motor. I haven't found out that it snapped a lobe on your cam because the washer got in between the cam and the valve spring. I mean, you never know. So just be noted of that when you're pulling it all off. So that's it guys, the cylinder head's off. Thank you guys so much for watching. Keep it fresh and I'll see you guys later.